<laughs> Check out Quill drawing on wall. You draw your own role-playing character for fun, as many flarpers are prone to do. She is the best character, and you wish you were her. Oh, wait, you are her! Your wishes have been granted. Probably as a special boon for being so great at everything. Your name is Marquis <laughs> Spinneret Mindfang, scourge of the land dwellers and the sea dwellers alike, and your worst nightmare is... To, and, your wor- and worst nightmare to silly boy skylarks everywhere. She has accumulated more treasure and gained more levels than any member of the uh, Petty Sea Grift class ever. Petticoat. Pe- uh, Petticoat. Petticoat. Yeah, Petticoat. 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 No. She, she has gained all the levels. All of them. Yeah. Proceed to computer. You have a lot to do. So many iron, uh, irons of the fire. Ah! Lousy dice. You just can't seem to go anywhere within your hive without stepping on, a, on an errant D4. Pointy little bastards. It's just your bad luck, you guess. You had such terrible luck ever since your accident, and it keeps getting worse. As far as you're concerned, the world can't end soon enough. As you were saying, so many irons in the fire. Such a tangled web. It is a web full of flaming irons and mixed metaphors. Tonight is a big night. You have a lot of meddling to catch up on tonight. Bugging and fussing and meddling. Take dice. You equip your enchanted dice set to the fabled Florite Octet. It consists of eight D8, plundered from a ghost ship during a particularly challenging campaign. In ancient times, such weapons were employed by roving bands of gamblinats. Deadly marauders with a passion for chance. They all died off, though. Took too many crazy risks. Rolling the dice will execute a wide range of highly unpredictable attacks. Very high rolls can be devastating to even the most powerful opponents. Of course, with the luck you've had lately, you can make a good roll to save your life. Gotta do something about this awful luck. Gotta catch a break! Once you get worked up about stuff you put eights in place, that don't really make a lot of sense phonetically. Begin meddling. Metal, metal. Time to get this show on the road. There are so many people to meddle with tonight. After you ditch an unwelcome solicitor first, that is. Doesn't she realize how rude it is to meddle? You'll fuss with her meddling later. What now? Oh. Him. You thought he'd washed his hands of you. Strange timing that he's bugging you tonight after so long without a peep from him. Deal with this guy. Oh, I can't even see it. You need to highlight it, dear. You can do that, you know. Hello. Oh my god, why aren't you still talking to me? This is the last time we'll ever talk. Still sticking with the white text, I see. So smooth and stylish. Forgot how much I loved highlighting it to read all the boring things you have to say. It's like a fun game for super extra handicapped retarded people. Like opening a present. Find out what obnoxious thing the mystery tool typed. What is it? A parting courtesy, I suppose. All the ways I've exploited you were meant to bring about the events that will take place this evening. Knowing this will provide context for the events in your near future, and will affect how you behave in response. These events will be just as important as those preceding. I've gone to great lengths, you see. You didn't exploit me. You are just a petty douche with a bad temper who likes to play games, and all I did was humor you. I did exploit you. Very thoroughly. It was easy. So full of yourself. Have I ever lost a game? Don't change the subject. What subject are you referring to? I'm going to log off in a big huff, and you have to promise not to use that nasty trick where you log me back in out of petty, douchey spite. And then we can go back to never ever talking. Because, man, that was heaven when it was like that. There's no need for that kind of assurance. I'll be brief. I no longer hold you accountable for any wrongdoing. In fact, I've given your transgression very little thought since the incident. 
If you acknowledge this amnesty and regard it as sincere, you may begin to find it in your favor again. This may be essential if you are to succeed on your journey. Mm-hmm. Slow down. Man, I'm just wearing out so many pens taking down these important notes. Fuck. Fuck you for ruining all my good note-taking pens and giving me this terrible cramp in my good note-taking hand. Incredible, the risks you take with your scorn. But of course, it was your unpleasant, simplistic temperament that made you so easy to control, vicious and predictable, like an insect. If you turn a swarm of wasps on a crowd, the outcome is certain. It takes no skilled strategist to understand this. You were, in fact, a waste of my talents. A primitive expedient. Blech. What a snob. You're worse than my medley meddler metal friend. I wonder why they waste their camaraderie on you. I'll never understand it. I thought you said you'd be brief. I'll say one last thing. Though the magnitude of the ensuing destruction resulting directly from your actions will be neither possible or necessary for you to fathom, there nevertheless ought to be a... The only question is whether you will live long enough to see it. I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I wouldn't bet on it. Goodbye. Zzz. Bye, asshole. Brrr, bump. More hollow comebacks, as hollow and wishy-washy as the inside of one of those dumb black globes. What use is all that attitude against a guy who's never wrong? It's so depressing, you can't even work up the energy to smash this stupid thing. Maybe you could stand to have some camaraderie wasted on you, even if it comes from a meddly meddler metal friend. Endure meddling. What? Just wanted to know, is your Lucia dead yet? Huh? What kind of question is that? Is this a trick? Are you trying to sabotage me? Are you in cahoots with someone? Uh, no. Cahoots! Cahoots, I say. You sure do seem to be saying cahoots. I'm just asking, because mine's dead. What? Oh, no. How did that happen? It was just her time. Really? Are you sure it wasn't sabotage? I would suspect sabotage if I were you. No, there was no plot or conspiracy or any trace of saboteurs operating through the special and magical union one can only describe as being in cahoots with another. When a virgin mother grub abdicates and renounces brooding, her time will be relatively short. I always knew this. She was so cool. You had the coolest Lucis of anyone I knew. I wanted to meet her someday. Maybe you still can. Yeah, meet her corpse. I guess that's not so bad a consolation prize. Seeing a dead mother grub. Wow. You were so lucky. My Lucis sucks. <laughs> Why did you ask if she's dead anyway? Do you know something? They're all dying. Or are going to soon. I believe it's a preemptive consequence of the game we are about to play. If a preemptive consequence is a concept that can be hold, said to hold any meaning. But from what I understand, if it is applicable in any sphere at all, then this game holds that sphere. Okay, I don't really get that. So you can just go ahead and think I'm some dumb flighty broad again. I wasn't going to think about that. You know what? I don't think even I really understand what I just said, so never mind. Now you have me a little worried. Man, I hope she's okay. Why would this happen? This is just my luck. Have some died besides yours? And, uh, you know whose, I guess. Yes, a few. Carcat thinks it's his fault. He believes his actions triggered an inauspicious chain reaction. You mean a curse? Sure. Wow. Between his curse and my shitty luck, we are so screwed. I'm not surprised to see you endorse his paranoia without hesitation, but I was attempting to illustrate a point in bringing it up. Phew! There goes another one sailing over the idiot girl's head. Okay, lay it on me. These events are inevitable, and regardless of whatever emotional entanglements obfuscate their significance, they will ultimately serve an important purpose. The curse had nothing to do with it, and Karkat's notion of a curse is inseparable from his perception of events as intrinsically negative and as tailored to his personal dissatisfaction, and your bad luck is the same way. I believe, anyway. Uh, okay. What would happen if you just cleared up a bit? Don't you think you would step on a few less hard triangles? Why'd you try to help me and stuff? What's the point? 
It's kind of bothersome and insulting sometimes. So I have a messy room. Big deal. My luck fucking blows. It's got nothing to do with it, and you just don't even know. Meddler. Why are you so meddly, Miss Meddlesome McFussy Fangs? Because you're dangerous. No way. I'm just fine. Why don't you can it? Every time you tell me to can it, I think it's funny. I mean, it's just a funny thing to say, don't you think? It's okay to be dangerous. Lots of people are. And dangerous people can be really important. Maybe even the most important sometimes. But it just means there's got to be someone around to keep an eye on them. And if not me, then who? Everyone has an important job to do. Okay, so you're spying on me. Kind of creepy. Man, maybe you should get a life. Or, you know, if you're so high and mighty and think you're so great, maybe you could, uh, I don't know, try and stop me from doing bad things. That wouldn't work. If I tried to stop you, you would regard me as an enemy instead of merely as a nuisance. And what good would that do? So I'm afraid McPussy Fangs it must be. Ugh! Okay, great, fine. I'm going to go check on my Lucis now. But I'm starting to think you are full of shit. And I am quite sure she'll be quite fine. You're right. Anything can happen, I guess. But just so you know, I'm sorry for your loss in advance. Ugh! Man, why didn't I just get that last word and sign off real quick like I usually do? Let you sneak that stinking little ninja quip in there. Ugh, so mad! Lousy, stupid, goddamn supportive friend! Check on Lucis. Okay. You go down, like, 50 million stairs to her nest below. You wonder if any other kid on the planet has such high, a high maintenance, Lucis. You doubt it. You passed by one of your completed doomsday devices. You promised you'd build it for an especially powerful and influential member of the nautical aristocracy. In return for his collusion during your campaigns. Some guy you were in cahoots with. You guess none of it matters now, though. It is tough to build, and it isn't perfect yet. Luckily, one of your pals nearby is pretty handy with technology. He can be tapped for arts and favors frequently. You wonder if any other kid on the planet has as many irons in the fire as you do. You did See? Look at this. She's fine, fine, and huge, and hungry as ever. You, uh... You get Yes, you're relieved? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Whew, why, why wouldn't you be? It would be devastating if anything happened to your dear sweet custodian. Your own arrow. You guess there's no delaying this guy's introduction anymore, as long as we're in the neighborhood. And her name. Your name is Equius Sahak. You love being strong. You are so strong, you would surely be the class of the elite legion of ruffian annihilators, and while such a calling would be quite honorable, you would prefer to join the ranks of the arch eradicators. Arch eradicators, yes. Arch eradicators. Perhaps the most noble echelon of the Imperial forces have to offer. Unfortunately, you suck at archery. You have not successfully fired a single arrow. Every time you try, you break the bow. You are simply too strong. You have broken so many bows, it has developed into a habit bordering on fetishistic. You have to stop, but addiction is a powerful thing. I know it. You have a great appreciation for the fine arts. You use your aristocratic connections to acquire priceless masterpieces, painted in the oldest and most respected Alternian tradition of the nude muscle beast portraits. Priceless masterpieces. <laughs> These striking depictions of the exquisite fauna native to Alternia remind you of the purest physical ideal that must be sought by anyone who professes a love of strength. When those of lesser bloodlines turn up their uncultured noses at such stunning material, it makes you furious. Practically everything makes you furious. You have so much rage, it can only be expressed through staggering quantities of physical violence. You build strong and sturdy robots, set them to kill mode, and beat the shit out of them in caged brawls. Sometimes you lose teeth, but they usually grow back. 
Your troll tag is Centaur's Testicle, and with your bow and arrow ever at the ready, you take exception to lewd language unbefitting of blue bloods. What will you do? Check on Lucis. Now, where did that craven excuse for a custodian go? It makes you furious when he goes missing like this. Probably off somewhere nursing his bruises. You swear, the old boy is made of glass. You're starting to get agitated. Arorthor, where are you? Oh, there he is. He was just preparing an ice-cold glass of nutritious Lucis milk for you, with a thick, foamy head on it, just the way you like it. You cannot hope to beat Arorthor in a butler off. He is simply the best there is. Thank Arorthor. You accept the frosty beverage and give the good fellow a grateful pat as gently as possible. Seriously, he's like a soft summer peach. Bruce. Drink Lucis milk. Shatter. Lucis milk is the secret to being strong. Actually, it isn't. You like to think that, though. The truth is you're really strong because you're kind of a freak. You were chosen by one of the strongest Lucis species on the planet. It was the only sort of custodian that could handle raising you. Oops, there goes the glass, as usual. <sighs> and, as usual, it sends you into a rage. The spilled milk quickly evaporates. You have to do something to calm yourself down. Let off some steam. Equivable. You mean equivable. A little archery practice ought to cool you off. But, of course, the piece of shit snaps like a twig the moment you pick it up. Actually, the feel of brittle wood giving way under the astonishing might of your mangrit is starting to calm you already. You equip it to your half-bow kind specimens, which is pretty much useless. 